Oh my goodness. We have the Tommy in Halloween oh costume. Man. I have always wanted this figure. That is cool. Welcome home, Rat Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day, and I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and the world's biggest Nickelodeon collection. And the creator of this channel actually is a part of the TMND. What the hell is that? What is TMND? You've obviously never heard of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Dogs. Like the Kakashi ones? Unrelated, slightly less lethal. But either way, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Nickelodeon snail mail camera flip. Hey folks, viewer mail time again. It's about to get a whole lot brighter up Pat, because your boy is here. And today is gonna be a big one because it is mail day. <laughs> we have two huge packages right here that were sent in from Dustin Tucker, aka Limestone Picker here on YouTube. He has sent in some fan mail in the past, some unbelievably awesome stuff. Here's a little clip of some of the stuff you sent last time. So I'm extremely excited to get in. This is another episode of Fan Mail. If you guys haven't seen it before, there's a whole playlist on the channel. And if you guys are interested in sending any fan mail, and the address will be on screen and the description down below. And you do not have to send any huge package. I just love getting simple letters or anything from you guys. But often you guys send these insanely huge packages just like Dustin Tucker. And we open them up here on this series. And it's filled with all the stuff that we're collecting and we love in this room. So let's go ahead and check this stuff out. And if you're unfamiliar with our Fan Mail series, we're also gonna be adding labels with Dustin's name onto every single item. So anyway, let's get into it. This is, I don't know what to do. This is the first time a fan ever came to my, came to the house, just like into the in the room. Yeah, it's a pretty big fan. <laughs> you have to say that's a cool box. Either way, this is the box that came in. I don't know if this is Dustin's <laughs> fan or not. So I just think it's so fun and random to see the box of the stuff comes in. I'm the same way. Recycle your boxes, ship with whatever you got. And it's also a little bit more fun. So let's see what we got inside of Dustin's first box here. He sent, ooh, well, that's a lot of color already. We go to like a thrift store, a flea market, the kind of color I'm always looking for is this. When you see that, those bright fluorescent colors, usually for me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pop this one open. But we also have this other box that was sent in by Dustin too. So I don't know if we should start with this one or start with this one, but I guess we'll just go with the big one and we'll do the little one last. Let's see what we got inside Dustin's package. There's a lot of stuff to go through, guys. Guys. So we're gonna try and keep it quick and know at the end we're gonna label absolutely everything So it looks like we have a lot of books and we have a lot of media So let's just grab a big chunk out here like this <laughs> Dang we have a lot of stuff to go through. Let's go ahead and do it. And Dustin, shout out to you. Thank you so much. There's such an interesting variety of stuff in here. Like, what the heck is this? And again, this stuff is from Dustin Limestone Picker. He's a picker. He goes out there and he looks for all types of awesome deals and finds just like we do here on this channel. So he found this guy. It looks like for only a dollar. And this thing is so clean. I love, love this holographic pattern that we have here on this Dora like dry erase board. Who's going to draw on a nice holographic? Holographic dry erase board. <laughs> I know, dude. Like, how is Adora got better freaking dry erase boards than Pokemon? Like, this is Solos above Yu Gi Oh! Pokemon. That is unbelievable. And then we've got a book. Oh my god, this is so cute. Fish Happens. I love this book so much because this is really my best way of handling a lot of things in my life. Maybe I learned that from SpongeBob. I'm not a master at it. Definitely. I'd be stressing detrimentally. But the best way to manage stress sometimes is kind of just to look at it with a funny perspective. For example, you have right here bad news mrs puff came down with a bad case of inflated nerves not to mention sailor mouth and it also gives you immediately after the good news the good news she fits into an ambulance and got to ride around really fast with the siren on Whee! <laughs> so the whole book just kind of tells you a story, but through the scenario of good news and bad news all the way through it. Really awesome book, and we don't have this in the collection either. And the next one over here we got is Ready for Laughs, A Treasure of Undersea Humor. So I think this is some of the different joke books that we have here in the room, but all compiled into one book, which is really unique and a lot of fun. So thank you so much. I mean, Limestone Picker, you found some awesome stuff here. It looks like you got a good deal on them too. So proud of it. I get to see all of you guys go out there and find such awesome find. And the condition on this is crazy. Great too. Yeah, it looks pretty.
already knew. It's like clean too, got the double sided cover. I love it. Let's go ahead and check out the next one here. We've got SpongeBob gets the suds and he got this one for 35 cents. And look at that glowing conch, dude. That is so adorable. He's got the conch shell tissue box and it looks like he's got his normal suds situation. Oh, there it is, the classic <laughs> meme. It's basically the suds episode just told in a different perspective. But a really, really cool book. So we got that one right there. Next up, we've got Diner Dash. This one looks like it got kind of crushed a little bit up here on the top, but it does have the disc still in there. We do not have Diner Dash. So I'm gonna have Ryan put some gameplay on screen right now. It's from the Nick Arcade. I wish the box would have came in a little bit better, but I think it might have already been like that. Hopefully it was, because I'd hate for the USPS to, you know, mess up the package. But sometimes, you know, like I told you guys, they, this is how they treat the packages. They can be a bit aggressive. Then we've got the iCarly I Dream in Tunes, which is a PC game. It looks like it actually turns iCarly into like a cartoon animated version of herself that you saw in a lot of the iCarly products, actually. We even got like iCarly figures that were kind of made based off of these animated sculpts you see here in this game. So we're gonna pop that up on screen too. We got the Fred movie right here. We do have this one in the collection, but either way, it's still an awesome find here. During the Explorer's Journey to the Purple Planet on the PS, too. We got Rango. And then right here, dude, check this out. We got some green labeling here from 2001. We have the party blowers. And it looks like one of those like old school party banners, you know? Oh, yeah. But look at like the actual like lettering and stuff on it. Like it doesn't even really look like SpongeBob theme necessarily. I don't know if that's what really came in there though. Ryan will have to help us out and pop it up on screen. But either way, I just think it's interesting because if so, then I mean like now we can see the current day, you know, SpongeBob like banners banners and medallions, they look so spongified. But back then it was like, oh, here it is, SpongeBob. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. All right, and then we've got the Ready to Read, A Mighty Big Wish. We've got Avatar, the last airbender right here. Love how freaking boomy, he's so powerful, he took out four of the Akatsuki. <laughs> <laughs> he's got all their rings right there. We got the Door of the Explorer stickers. We have Door of the Explorer super babies. I'm telling you, Limestone went crazy, dude. We have so much stuff that we're gonna be labeling. We have the Adventure Time book. And my gosh, the artwork is brilliant. I love the illustration so much. Love seeing that awesome illustration here in the comic. We have some Dora the Explorer. He had a lot of vintage Dora, dude. This is from 2002 as well, Dora nice. the Explorer. Party gift bags, we have two of them right there. Not bad at all. We got SpongeBob's Christmas Wish, and ooh, we got two of them right here. And that is, oh man, dude, I am definitely gonna be giving one of these guys to Parker. He would definitely love that art. Not resident or uh, local avatar expert he loves avatar and this is a book on how to actually draw all the different characters and even myself included i like to draw from time to time i will definitely be using this book for reference there you oh that is adorable i need to learn how to draw momo <laughs> I need it so bad. And I will be putting this in our document files, actually, along with our fairly odd parents, how to draw. I think that these archives of how to draw the characters are just something that needs to be preserved, and they're just so cool. And then we have a SpongeBob Look and Find book, which is actually new. We have seen a couple variations of the SpongeBob Look and Find book. We'll pop them up on screen right now, but we haven't seen this one before. I think this one, I'm gonna go ahead and guess. I'm gonna guess 2006. 2007, okay, I was a little off. So this is very unique era of SpongeBob, but you can see it's an actual actually completely new one. We have the SpongeBob down here from the United Plankton logo. And can you find for me on screen, jellyfishing for ding dogs. You can't find it if I block your finger. <laughs> <laughs> we do have jellyfishing for ding dongs. And also we have a sombrero that if you wear that upside down, we know what could happen. <laughs> So it has like a whole little guide back here as well. And I love the book. The book is super soft. Go ahead and fill that. Oh yeah, it's like squishy, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got a lot of books here. Let's go ahead and separate this stuff out. When it comes to limestone, he's like the king of media and books. He finds so much of this stuff. So let's go ahead and stack all this stuff up separately and we'll keep it moving. Okay, next up we have this little Garfield keychain, which is interesting and cute. It's like if Garfield and then Winnie the Pooh had a baby and then it also played the saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> the saxophone thing just Kind of an additional feature. But we also have this little Chucky push pop. And hey, dude, look at this little. Oh! Dang. Dude, that thing has some speed on it. Why is that so remarkably fast? Yeah, I was not expecting that. Oh, yeah, that's got some hang time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, put back the hang time.
<laughs> Which reminds me so much of the SpongeBob boating badge where it's like, this is the one time SpongeBob gets a license and they're like, oh, let's give him the one with six tuplet exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy is definitely gonna be going over with the rest of our stuff by the Nick Cart Racing Machine. All right, we have a big book right here. And this one says the Cartoon Classics Collection. And it's got Huckleberry Hound, the Jetsons, Scooby Dooby Doo, Tom and Jerry, Droopy, and also the Jetsons. It's got the original, the Flintstones Cartoon Network logo right there too. But dude, this book was $40 hey. back in the day. This is, how old is this? Dude, $40 back in the day, that's 1997, $40. You could have bought a Buick. But let's check it out. Oh, I am definitely gonna read this though. The illustrations again are absolutely beautiful. The page quality, it feels so good. And it's full color. Every single page is all pictures. This is a book for me, man. I love this. Look, dude, Fred is watching Yogi Bear on TV. Wow. Now that's a crossover. Oh, and then we got Scooby-Doo and oh man, the quality on these pages. What a night for a night. Yes, the first ever episode of Scooby-Doo. It's kind of laid out here. Hey, there's me. The Double glitz. <laughs> He's blind, apparently. <laughs> all right, so that book is awesome. And again, squishy book, man. I don't know why all the books back in the 90s were like, oh, you can use this as a book or as a pillow. We have a Drake and Josh, like, solo disc. Uh, hug me, brother. <laughs> but this is actually a video now disc. I feel like this probably was a promotional disc or something that it came with. And the episodes it has on here is Grammy, which my favorite scene of all time from that is Josh trying to take a shot at the basketball hoop. He got one shot, and this is what happened. And they have Dune Buggy as well, too. So some pretty good episodes on here. But this is a little preview disc. Oh, but that wasn't it for Video Now. We do not have this many Video Now discs, so I'm super hyped on these. We have the Fairly Odd Parents Video Now disc, and we also have the Fairly Odd Parents with the Crimson Chin Video Now disc as well. So thank you so much for sending these in, Limestone. All right, we have three big books here, which is what? What is this? I don't even know what this is. Wow. That is an interesting thing when you don't, when I see something Nickelodeon, I am completely unfamiliar with. The Mystery Files of Shelby Woo. You wouldn't believe all the stuff I get to do. Crime scene investigation, questioning witnesses, handling evidence. I feel really, really out on this one that I don't know this show or never watched it. Strange things are going on at the police station. Shelby's friend, Susan Skeleton. Well, I mean, when you have a friend named Susan Skeleton, you better get in the mystery business. Yeah. <laughs> Your name's Susan Skeleton? Okay, we gotta start something up here. But I think it's basically about like how she's kind of like a technological like mystery solver, which is kind of ahead of its time if that's the case. I am very interested to learn more about Shelby Woo. I might even watch this whole dang show I like if I find it. All right, let's keep checking this stuff out. We got a little bag of like old school Nickelodeon stickers, which is kind of interesting. I don't know how you got these little bag of stickers like this, but looks like a little bag of Nickelodeon stickers. All right, rolling out some DVDs here. We got a lot of them. All right, so we have the Kids' Choice Awards 2012, which I don't feel like most of them got a DVD release, so that's kind of cool that this one in particular had one. What game do you think got favorite video game in 2012? 2012? Just Dance. Oh, wow. Gonna be okay. That's a favorite video game? <laughs> yeah, 2012, everybody was playing Just Dance on their Wii, Mitchell. And you wanna know what? Got the favorite cartoon of 2012 in just about every other year. Besides 2008. Shell <laughs> up, yeah, besides one year. It's <laughs> Spongebob. But 2012, we were talking about, you know, it's all living in the past, Mitchell. Spongebob <laughs> Squarepants, of course, of course, of course. All right, then we have some Jimmy Neutron video nows as well, which I hope they work. And I only mention the video now is because every time I ever pick up a video now, it is, they almost never like work for some reason. And I think it's just because kids are so rough on these discs. But either way, we got a couple Jimmy Neutron ones to check out here. We got the double pack of Max and Ruby, which is kind of crazy because they're already a double pack. So it's like a quadro pack right there of Max and Ruby. We got the Rugrats all grown up. We got an interesting one. We got Tuttenstein for Discovery Kids, which is kind of a weird show. Not a lot of people probably remember at all. And hey, dude, we just got the sequel to this. Now oh, we have nice. iCarly one that is awesome and then we have jerry trainer they actually used this picture from 2022 that <laughs> he just still looks so much the same it's unbelievable oh dude but look there's actually promotions inside for some of the items we have here in the room like we have the megabyte mic because back then a term like megabyte was so modern you're like oh my god he knows about megabytes yeah <laughs> and here's some of the figures i was speaking of and i still am looking out for this icarly set right here which they actually have some figures that go with the set all right awesome let's go ahead and move on the next one we got here is on the xbox 360 Connect, baby. You remember the two years where people use Connect? This is back in that era. 
This this is one of those weird games though where Ryan's gonna put some gameplay on screen. I've actually played this game. It's all skinned as SpongeBob and it's surfing, but there's no SpongeBob music, there's no SpongeBob background, no SpongeBob anything really. It just <laughs> happens to be SpongeBob in the game. But we do not have it on the Xbox 360, we have it on the DS, so an awesome pickup. We have the huge disc. Look at this, long, tall, and handsome right here. <laughs> and then we've got the three pack Ooh. right here though. Awesome set, and like I kind of remember having these big, tall, long, and elongated. Boxes. <laughs> <laughs> we have the SpongeBob Christmas. We got the Tales from the Deep. We have the Tale of the Mighty Knights. Look like two of them that are nice. This one's a fairy. This one's a freaking king. And for some reason, he's got a pumpkin on his head. What kind of freak puts a pumpkin on his head and goes around stealing dragon eggs? <laughs> they need to kick you out of the backyard. We have the mission to Mars. He cleaned up his act. <laughs> <laughs> he cleaned up his act, dude. But dude, he's being a little shady. Like He knows there's an alien back there. And he's not even saying anything to the crew. And Pablo's over here trying to space Stark Man. Oh! The Wonder Pets! Wonder Pets! Wonder Pets are on their way to save the Beatles and... That's it. They forgot Ringo again. Oh, no, Ringo's back there. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> We have the Save the Nutcracker. We have Green Karate, which is awesome because we have this one sealed in the collection, but now we have a copy we can actually play here in the background. It looks like it's in great shape too, so thank you so much on that one. We have the video now for Fairly Odd Parents, which growing up, I had this actual one. Dude, look at that tiny disc. It's so small. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know how many three or four episodes are on this guy. What is that, that little action replay disc you used to get? Oh yeah, like you ever actually put it in the freaking disc and like installed it to your computer. I would just go on freaking Serby boy. Just type in the code. Type in them codes. <laughs> the next up. Oh, I love, love, love this game. We have Employee of the Month. The SpongeBob Employee of the Month. I used to play this game growing up as well. Which has a very fun scene. I'm pretty sure if Ryan can find it and have him put it on screen. There's an episode where you help out Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. You get to see like Mermaid Man's like uh, lair in his office basically. And in the office, there is a picture of Patrick and... Mermaid Man, very clearly drinking some kind of bubbly substance. Very weird. <laughs> The next up, we have the Nick Jr. favorites right here with a whole myriad of cartoon characters and also Sporticus. All right, so that was an awesome little setup of DVDs here. Let's keep it moving. Again, Limestone, all I can say is always just thank you, thank you, thank you for sending so much awesome stuff for us to check out in. Let's keep it moving. This is an interesting thing. It's kind of like a uh, call me SpongeBuck, which is actually SpongeBob's ancestor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whoever they is. Call me SpongeBuck, whoever they is. <laughs> there you go, like that. And that's a 10 gallon hat with no gallons because you got a sponge underneath. <laughs> I'm so glad that we sent this guy in because I think this is a really, really unique and fun piece. And then we've got a huge collection of books here. We have a Jimmy Neutron book, which is not something you see every day. We got a bunch of different Nick Zone books here because this package was a little bit further back in time. But thank you so much for sending these guys over, Limestone. We have the Avatar of the Last Airbender Lost Why Adventures. Why do you look like that? What the heck? What do you mean, sexy? <laughs> that is sick right there. I just think they're all bad. But we have not read this. I think this is the compilation of all the different Avatar comics into ones. I definitely am going to be reading this guy. Love it. We have the Scooby-Doo Roller Ghoster. We have the free comic book day book here with Ty Lee. And it looks like Toph, which is an uncanny team up. <laughs> but that sounds kind of awesome. We've got Blue's number one picnic. And hey, Ooh. now that's an unexpected find. We have the Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Too cool for school. This is the episode where Matt became cool and Blue became a dork and Mac got to hang out with Jamaz. You're the coolest kid in town, James Withersy. I am. We have When Pants Attack, which is the first ever episode of Jimmy Neutron besides the pilot. We have There's No Net Like Home, which is Wild Thornberries. We have Tommy's Best Adventure, which is from the Rugrats, and a really cool big one here, which is the Rugrats in Paris, the storybook, which I think our other one had a rip on the back page. So let's check this one out, and it looks like it's in great shape, so this one will probably replace the one that we have in the collection currently. I absolutely love this book as well, so thank you so much for sending this one in limestone. We'll be at this one to the document folders. And then we've got Garfield and Friends. We've got SpongeBob serving up a spile. We've got Patrick Star, which goes to the Squidward book that we've had before in the past. We got the fire truck. We got another Paw Patrol. We have Merry Christmas, SpongeBob. We have SpongeBob Slapshot, Scared Silly, Campfire Funnies, and a beautiful cover. We have Food Fight right here, which is one of my favorite episodes as well. Only 
taste the condiments. With relish. We have my favorite letters. We have the SpongeBob C mail. What do you think the, the Patrick's gonna sound like? <laughs> I think it's gonna be like, it's mail time, SpongeBob. Pat, that does sound like Patrick entering a room. Oh wait, dude, the next one's a Powerpuff Girl one that does the same thing. Dude, this, tell me this one doesn't sound like a Pokemon Gen 1 cry. <laughs> Bro, that's Mewtwo appearing in Cerulean Cave. But these are awesome. I love these style books. They add so much different perspective to the book. So for example, it's not SpongeBob laughs. What does a big one do? I like surprises. <laughs> That's what it was, a surprise. <laughs> Where does he even say that? I don't know. Oh, here it is, here it is. SpongeBob, Patrick are busy redecorating SpongeBob's pineapple. When they hear the doorbell, they get it. They both yell. I like surprises. <laughs> <laughs> that is so out of context. After that, we've got the great snail race right here. One of a lot of people's least favorite episodes because of the, the jarring treatment of Gary in this episode. The look how they stock images of them look so creepy in the background. So ominous, yeah. <laughs> they look like the Grady twins. Come and play with us. <gasps> Hurry. <laughs> and now we've got a few little mini toys here, so let's check these out. I don't know how that Limestone could have spotted this, but we have this little tiny leopard. And this leopard, I think, is actually from the wild thornberries. Then we got Garfield here, old fat cat Garfield right there, <laughs> before they slendered him out like Pikachu and SpongeBob. <laughs> then we got slightly skinnier 80s Garfield. We got two thornberries elephants. And then we have the Spark Reptar. And you can see there's actually a couple sparks inside of there. And then we have a little Broby figure right here. Then we have some VHSs, and this one is key, dude. I don't know if we have Summertime Tales, but we do already have a sealed Scooby-Doo 2 on VHS. So now we have Scooby-Doo 1 on VHS. And check out the back, man. We got Ooh. Zoinks. And it has Michelle Michelle Geller, has Freddie Prince Jr., Linda Cardellini, and then it also has Matthew Lillard in his first reprising role as Shaggy. So an iconic and awesome find here. But then not just that, we actually have, is this Disney Doug or Nickelodeon Doug? This is Disney Doug, so this is Disney's Doug. And you can tell Disney Doug because Patty Mayonnaise got a little less mayonnaise. You know, her hair is a little shorter in the Disney Doug for some reason. That's an odd change. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of odd changes that Disney did. But this is our first Doug VHS though, so awesome one. And then checking it out, we have some more coming up here. We have the Blues Clues Playtime with Periwinkle. <laughs> we got Seascapers right here. Here, which we have, hey. the, we have the promotional one of this, but we did not have this one. So this is a new one for us. That's like the thing on like uh, just upset. He's really doing the thing there. He's like, oh yeah, I don't even want to do my thing. We have rhythm in blue, and we got blue takes you to school with Periwinkle. <laughs> and then we got Spongorama. I don't know if we have Spongorama. We have to check this one out for sure. That is an awesome one though. And then we have the Rugrats Thanksgiving, which this one is a very, very clean copy. I know for sure we'll be replacing the one that we have in there currently with this one. That is an awesome pick up there, Limestone. Thank you so much again for everything you sent. And then we have another book right here, which is The Journey of Alan Strange. But you know that those aliens aren't really there. So him just doing this, <laughs> this is so funny. But I do remember Alan Strange to a degree. I have never watched it, but the fact that they got a book is just awesome. And I didn't know there's so many books for shows back then. I really don't remember because books were a lot more popular back then. So this is our first book right now in the collection for Alan Strange. You want to know what's coming up next? I like surprises. Yeah, well, here it comes. All right, the next up, we got a bunch of VHSs. I've never heard of this in my life. Cartoon Network, the Halloween Trio. But it looks really interesting. So Ryan's going to have to add a clip on screen. Come on, Mr. Moucho. That's actually insane. Do we have the Buzz Lightyear Star Command? We have the Jimmy Neutron movie right here. We have the Looney Tunes presents Marvin the Martian. And then we also have a Blue's big musical movie, BBMM as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and then last we have the awesome Powerpuff Girls Looking Fine book, which we have, but it's the soft cover version of this. So this is a way big improvement on it because the picture quality is so much better. And you guys can see it gives you full shots of Townsville where you can hunt down for monsters and kind of joy in the Powerpuff Girls trio, or now a quadro. 
<laughs> so it's an amazing book. We'll probably have to clean up a couple of these items before we put them in the collection. I'm appreciative and I think it's awesome that he sent it over in the first place. So I have no problem claiming some of this stuff up a little bit. But I do want to make sure that all this stuff is like kind of up to what we usually have it up before we put it into the collection. All right, and that is actually it for the first box. An unbelievable amount of books and DVDs. Like for sure, we have a lot of new coverage here on terms of just media. Insane. So much cool stuff to go through. We got a label, but we have one more box from Limestone too. So let's put this stuff to the side and let's open up this last box and check it out. All right, next box. Let's check it out. Oh, so it looks like that one was all media and this one's a variety of different style stuff. So let's check it out. First off here, adorable. Oh. We have the SpongeBob watch. It is so freaking cute. I'm not exactly sure where this came out, but very, very cute nonetheless. Oh my goodness. We have the Tommy and Halloween what? costume. I have always wanted this figure. That is cool. It is Tommy in an actual Reptar costume. Like it doesn't get more adorable than that. <laughs> that is an amazing piece right there. Thank you so much for sitting this one in limestone. This is one piece that I definitely am gonna be putting up and display and be treasuring always up there because that's gotta go with my Reptars, you that know? That is so sick. <laughs> I gotta say, man, that might be one of my favorite Rugrats Mattel figures ever. We have a SpongeBob holiday ornament, which for sure is gonna be going with our Nickmas tree for this Christmas coming around. We'll have a brand new ornament for it. We have this figure that is, it looks, oh my God. <laughs> Dexter, what is going on here? We have Dexter and he has Dee Dee strapped on to this little device. I can't even remember the episode this actually was referring to, but it's very, very odd. You can spin Dee Dee around, I guess, wherever her finger lands. That's what your answer is. So for this case, it would be a lot of nope. Yeah. <laughs> but very weird one. We have a SpongeBob wallet, which I almost can assure that these two came together probably. And then, oh my goodness, we have the adorable SpongeBob pillow. Pillowcase. Look at this, dude. This is the original SpongeBob pillowcases. Wait a minute. I think these are the actual pillowcases that Patchy the Pirate has in his house. I think that this might be the pillowcase that he has in that episode. So that is incredible. I don't know whether I want to open them or keep them sealed. Like, I, I want to keep like, them sealed. I feel like you have to keep them sealed. But I also want those for my bed so bad. <laughs> <laughs> because if you guys don't know, I have like a regular adult comforter, you know. But in the, the winter time, I'll usually get my SpongeBob comforters and put it on as a second blanket because if you never slept with two heavy blankets on your body you're missing out who it's like a prison of comfort. So I usually would do that with my SpongeBob blankets and I would not mind a SpongeBob pillow, but we already have one. Maybe I'll keep this one sealed. This green label. An amazing find here, Limestone. This whole box right here is absolutely incredible. Oh, this could go any direction. We have the Universal what? Studios cards. So these are cards you could have gotten at Universal Studios. I love how they have these like Spider-Man, the whole Shrek, and then SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Universal's licenses are very wide, you know? It's the same thing when you go to the theme park. You go from Simpsons land to Jurassic World. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know how I got here. And then you walk a little further and all of a sudden you're in the Diagon Alley. You know, it's a wild place. But it actually has cards. And I guess they're not technically SpongeBob cards as much as they are just Universal Studios cards, but they do have SpongeBob on them nonetheless. So this is a cool piece to have to the collection. And it also has Shrek and also um, other characters. But those are our two favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have some SpongeBob like styluses, it looks like. So they're clip pins. So they're clip pins. You clip these onto stuff and then are also pins. We have a very strange Dang. long neck, my boy, Squiddy. He puts the long and the long in Tan and Handsome. This is an OG Squidward plushie, if, <laughs> if you can tell. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. He looks like he just designed himself. <laughs> this is from 2003, but this is an odd boy. Then after that, we have this really adorable Powerpuff Girls CD case, because back in the day, everybody had to have one of these CD cases so you can protect all your PS2 games, your CDs, your DVDs, all the discs you needed, your compact discs. You had all of them something like this. That is adorable. We have, dude, check this out. It's like a Pokemon bag clip. So that is a cool one for sure. And it's from Burger King. It's a Burger King bag clip, but it's really cool. It kind of gives me Pokedex vibes from 2009. Oh, dude, you're going to love this. What is that? Hey, Jackie! <laughs> <laughs> we have Jackie Chan's niece from the Jackie Chan's Adventure Show. That is going on my desk inside of the variety room. Am I wrong or is that Jackie Chan's niece? I don't know, but it, 
Either it way. It looks like Jackie Chan's niece got into a fight with Juniper Lee and they fused. Like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it looks like it might be like a spin top or like a bobbler of some kind, just generally. Now, Jackie Chan is busting his way into Wendy's kids' meals. You can watch him teach Jay to spin move. So then not just that, we have a little pork chop, which you can actually use him as a little grabber. So you can just go ahead and grab onto Jackie's knees. And just, no, yeah. <laughs> or you can grab onto Squidward's long neck for a nice massage. He is super cute. I'll definitely be having him hold something really, really cute with the rest of our stuff. Down there in the little uh, dunk section we got. Oh man, dude, somebody went to Universal Studios. Cause this is the Universal Studios cards and this is the Ooh. Universal Studios plankton. <laughs> Looks like his eyebrow got ripped up a little bit here, but it is okay. He's still super cute to see here from 2005 we have the universal studios plankton oh yes but my favorite thing of all here i'm pretty sure there's not gonna be anything that tops this what the heck yes is that? this right here was i think they maybe gave it out in cereal or at certain restaurants but this was actually a halloween trick-or-treat bag that's so sick yes this is gonna be so awesome when we do the halloween decorations this year we already have a frank and bob krabby patty container but this this thing right here is gonna be hanging somewhere pridefully with some awesome Halloween SpongeBob plushie sticking out of it. I told you, Frank and Bob is hard to beat, man. That is just too cute. And then it collapses, boom. I mean, it doesn't really have that much smaller, but <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> a little bit there, you know? All right, then we have a Squidward figure here. We have a Doug right here, which is super adorable. So you hang the bag clip like this, but you can pull on his cape and it actually will pull his arms up and down. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. We've got Chucky, the adventurer Chucky, right here. We have Bob's Burgers, Tommy Pickles. <laughs> Bro, tell me that didn't look like Duh. one of Bob's kids. <laughs> we have the Doug Keychain, which is another really iconic item I remember growing up. I think you got these at Burger King. I'll never forget having like a couple of these as a kid. And do you remember these old coin banks? You just oh, yeah, shove just... your coin in this little plastic slot here. <laughs> and then we've got a Garfield tie. This little cute tie Garfield is adorable. I love him so much. <laughs> and then we've got a Dexter figure, which is from Burger King as well. I think this one might be missing something. It might have been something that went back here, like a Dexter sign or something like that, but still a very cute figure. A SpongeBob Amanda Franco. <laughs> it's like, remember back in the day when you could go like Venice Beach or whatever, and they would do those like airbrush designs? This is Amanda Franco's custom handkerchief. <laughs> that is so odd. And then we have a SpongeBob beanie, but you can tell it's old school. Yeah, the color on it too. Like the color is super rich. Dude, look at that. That is cool quality right there with the actual texturing here in the eyes. It looks great. It's from 2011, so it's not that old, but it's pretty old. And then we've got Dora Super Spies on the cartridge here. We have Diego for the VTech, which I actually have a VTech somewhere around here. And then we have the SpongeBob VTech game as nice. well, which is so cool to see so many new cartridges in the collection. And then dude, I got three bangers here coming up. So let's move this stuff to the side here. We got so much stuff to check out. We have this awesome boots. <laughs> He is so cute. Look at those eyes. How can you swipe anything from these eyes, swiper? <laughs> <laughs> you be swiping for me, yeah, but you can you gotta swipe him. He's got a couple scrapes and stuff on his belly and whatnot, but I think we might be able to clean up majority of these. We'll check it out. And then next up, we have the smallest version of this thing I've ever seen. You know, these are those things you grow up with and you pull on the side. It kind of tells you what the animal's noise is. So for this one, how you do it though, is you push down on it, twist it to whatever one you want, and then press on it. So for this one, we're gonna switch to Swiper, and then you press on it like this. Swiper, you can keep it. Swiper, you can keep it. <laughs> Never seen one quite this small before. Thank you again, Limestone, for all this unique and fun stuff. And then next up, our last banger here is this container right here. It says sticker treasure kit, but man, this thing is loaded, dude. We have this little lot right here, which is salt and pepper. We have soap. We have the mailbox. We have the alarm clock, which actually has a little twisting thing on the back. We have Barnacle Boy, Barnacle Boy, Barnacle Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got Barnacle Man. <laughs> It's Squidward. We have a little adorable boots here. We have a little adorable Dora. We have a Looney Tunes mug for those little adorable characters. We have Mr. K. We got Squid. We got Patrick. We got Patrick. We got Angelica right here. And these are the Just Play figures, it looks like, for Angelica, Chucky, Tommy, Phil, and Lillian. And it's not done there, dude. We also have a Kids' Choice Awards meal toy. And finishing it off, an old school Gurr. My name is Gurr. Hear me roar. 
Star patch from 2007. You know this was in Hot Topic. You know it. Yep. And then we have the fork for the Rugrats. So that is absolutely everything. That was an amazing unboxing. Truly unreal. I can't wait to add some of this stuff to the collection. And of course, we're going to label all this stuff with Dustin's name on. Again, Dustin, thank you so much. As always, as I always say, you guys do not have to send anything to this level. But I think it's absolutely amazing and so kind. And some of you guys are so generous. And it's so heartwarming being able to see all the stuff that you guys find out there. So thank you so much for sending this out, Dustin. Anyway, stick around. We're going to add some of this stuff to the collection. But before that, you know the drill. Stay in it. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to add all of Dustin's stuff in right now, but going forward in fan mail, we do have to make some changes because doing this video along with a couple others, and this is not related to this video, it's just an overall discussion because of the fact that there's been so much amazing support from all of you beautiful people that we can't even keep up with the fan mail anymore. So what I'm going to ask is if we're going to continue to keep doing fan mail, the address will be on screen as it always is and in the description, but when you guys send stuff up, I'm asking if you guys could probably hone in on maybe five to ten items that you really want us to open up and check or maybe add to the collection. And if you want to send a box that's really big like this, just understand that there's probably a chance I'm not going to be able to keep all of it. And also hone in on the stuff that we really collect, like SpongeBob, Nickelodeon, maybe a little Cartoon Network here and there. That'll help with making sure you have a better chance of each item actually getting added. Because I feel bad when people send me a huge box filled with stuff that they found at the Goodwill bins or a thrift store, whatever it may be. And because some of it is like significantly damaged, whether it be a DVD that's just beyond repair, or it's something that I just can't add to the collection for space sake because it's Disney related or something outside of the ballpark of the world's biggest collections we're trying to build. So I think zoning in on a really special item that you guys want to see us open, that would help us out a lot. And again, like I said, I don't have a problem if you guys want to send a huge box of just whatever you find because you don't necessarily know what I have, what I don't have in the collection. And we're working on making a list, but that's going to take time with everything we're doing. But as I said, this has to be an ongoing understanding that I probably am not going to be able to keep every single thing. And I hope you guys understand that. I love doing the fan mail and I know a lot of you guys enjoy this series too we've been doing it for like four years now and I don't want to stop it I never thought that this channel of all of them was going to be the one that we had to end up getting like overwhelmed on but you guys are so supportive and this community is so awesome that I shouldn't have expected anything less so keeping those notes in mind keep it to maybe five to ten items that are specific that you really want us to see if you do send something bigger know that we might not be able to keep everything and hone in on Nick Spongebob and a little cartoon network but again specific items you really want us to see and I'm so so grateful for whatever you send, even if it's just a letter. It doesn't have to be an item at all. Thank you. Okay, and again, that message was not directly for Dustin. Dustin is an absolute legend, and thank you so much for all the awesome fan mail that you send. It has nothing to do with just the fact that there's too many people that are sending so much stuff. And like I said, we only can do so much. But anyway, let's go ahead and add the stuff that we are going to be adding today. So right here, we have all of the Video Now discs, and we're actually going to be putting these down here because right here, we have our Video Now, and very soon, there's going to be another Video Now product back here. So I'm going to put these down here kind of is our mixed media bin right here where our DVDs used to be and this DVD shelf is going to be very soon going to be kind of specified for the stuff that we want to watch the most so as of right now we put everything in there so we have live action we have Nick Jr. but we're going to be putting the Nick Jr. stuff along with some of the VHS's into the filing cabinet for right now and very soon we're going to be getting a second filing cabinet that is going to be designed for just mixed media and we're going to keep this shelf for just the stuff that we watch all the time because after building this kind of realized that half of 
these discs, like, you know, Nick Jr. ones, I want them in the collection to have them for purposes, but I'm not grabbing them every single day. So it's probably not necessary for them to be right here. Okay, so all Dustin stuff is labeled. We got Dustin Tucker 2023 right inside of here. So thank you so much, Dustin. We got the Journey to Purple Planet, iCarly on the Wii, and also SpongeBob Surf and Skate Road Trip. We're gonna add this right here to our loose video game bin right now. So now we have all the games inside of here, and these are all games that are open, just ready for play. So it's nice to have them here all available. So for the DVDs that are gonna be added to the collection here, we're gonna be adding Mission to Mars. The box is really clean on this one and the disc. We have the Save the Beatles right here, which is one of my favorite covers ever. And then we got Karate as well that we're gonna be putting up here with the SpongeBob DVDs. I do have that one, but it's sealed, but now we have one for watchable reasons. Okay, and for the VHSs, we still have to go through them and see which ones we have and which ones we don't have, but we're gonna be adding all of these guys right here into the collection. We did not have Seascapers in here, so this is another SpongeBob VHS we could check off the list. So glad to have this one. And we also don't have these ones too, so we're gonna add these ones in along with the Thanksgiving Rugrats into the VHS collection down here. And you guys are seeing some of the extra VHSs and stuff, they're already starting to be export over here. It may seem like there's a lot right now, and there is, but as we get more and more, it's not like they're still making a lot of DVDs now. Eventually, we're gonna get to the point where we start seeing a lot more duplicates here and there, so I'm just trying to keep track of all of them for now until we get to that point. Okay, and the SpongeBob Employee of the Month PC game had a very, very cool and clean box too. So we added this one in as well, along with the great disc. This is just actually just a genuinely good game you should check out. So we're gonna put that guy right in here with the rest of our video games. This SpongeBob Hot Rod is definitely going down here with all the other sponge cars. I gotta reorganize this section, but that's coming in the renovations. For right now, we're gonna put him right there. <laughs> he actually looks like he's made for that spot. Yeah. <laughs> and for our universal cards, we're gonna add this down here with all of our cards and board games. All right, next time has arrived. We have loose cartridges here. They are a little small, so we couldn't put labels on these ones, but these ones came in again from Dustin Tucker. Thank you so much. But which bin contains our loose game cartridges though? Let us know. I think I know for sure it should be this one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you right? Are you sure it's not this one? No, I'm pretty sure that's the bag clips. No. It is yeah, the bag clips. clips. So, inside of here is... A bunch of cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the loose cartridges. So, Mitchell got it right. Here's all of our loose cartridges. We have some for the, the Smart Cycle. We have some right here for the Leap Max. We do not have any of these V-Smile games in here, which is kind of weird, because it's like this weird, like, three-skin that like you pull back, but they're huge cartridges. And then we have the Dora one right here for Super Spies. I don't think we have Dora Super Spies in here, yeah. So we're gonna add the Dora in here along with these cartridges, along with our Smart Cycles, and another one to our loose cartridges. And for our little quail man, he is gonna go right down here next to my childhood keys. I just think it's fun to pull on this guy, so we got him right next to Naruto there. And for our Tommy is Reptar, we actually have him right back here with all the other Reptars you guys can see here. Very beautiful green. <laughs> one of my favorite color, it's these variations of green. Okay, so for the SpongeBob pillowcase, very soon, this whole shelf and this whole shelf are gonna be dedicated to green label products. I think this pillowcase is something we're gonna have to add around here for sure. So for right now, it's gonna go right here with all the other green label products that I have to use to decorate in this section. And the ornament is gonna go in storage with the Nick Mystery for next year. And for our pins, we're gonna add it in here with the rest of our stationary stuff, like our pencils, binder. This one's actually unrelated Nickelodeon one, but I actually use this one because I don't want to write in my real Nickelodeon ones. <laughs> okay, and for all these documents, like our free comic book day for Avatar, Dora's party bag gifts, Avatar The Last Airbender, how to draw, the storybook, all of these are going into our Nickelodeon documents here. Okay, so for the SpongeBob look and find, we're gonna have to put this on the other side of the bookshelf with some of the other books that don't really fit inside of the actual shelf because it's a little too tall here. <laughs> all right, so for these books, guys, we're gonna be putting, these, this is, these two are very interesting to me because one's glossy and one's matte. And I, Mitchell was like, oh, you got two of the same book. I was like, no, we don't. One's matte, one's glossy, and one printed in Mexico, and one was printed somewhere else to go. So we're gonna be putting all of these books right here in this cubby because all of these books right here, along with these ones, are all books that I still need to clean. And you can see on some of the books, they're very, very clean, but sometimes you can get some books like this that are pretty dingy on the sides and stuff. So I'm gonna be cleaning these books up along with, I said, these ones too. So we're gonna keep all of them right here, but eventually they will be 
reorganized into a fashion similar to this to where they kind of match the height for whatever book that they're buying. Okay, and for the Cartoon Network stuff, of course, we're gonna be keeping the Scooby-Doo books. We got the Foster's Home, we've got the Ben 10. We're gonna be adding that with the rest of our other Cartoon Network and Scooby-Doo related books. And there we have them. And we also have the Adventure Time Kaboom comic book, which is just beautiful. The illustrations in there are so good too. So we're definitely gonna be putting this guy right over here somewhere. And for the giant Powerpuff Girls book, I think, like I said, we have this one in the collection. So you can see now, this is the paperback version. Oh, wow. So we're gonna be putting these, this guy in here, just like this for right now, because it's the only way that it fits in there, both of those two. So this VHS, I'm just really interested in watching when it comes around to Halloween time. So hopefully I can get my VHS player going by then, because that's what I'm just interested in. So we'll be keeping that one on the side. The Scooby-Doo though, we have to go add that to the VHS collection. And I'm gonna show you, we've got Scooby-Doo 2 sealed as well. So guys, mind the light a little bit. <laughs> Not the most light in here, but this is where we store like Cartoon Network cards and stuff like that. You can see we got some cards in here. I mean, this is just kind of like a general storage space. And in here we have all of our VHSs in relation to Cartoon Network and variety of cartoons. But you can see right here, we have Scooby-Doo Unleashed. Now we have both of these guys sealed in the collection. That is so cool. I mean, if I found this one, I knew it was lucky, but now that Limestone sent in this one too, we are really set. Both the live action movies sealed on VHS. Okay, so that is actually it for this video. Again, thank you so much to Limestone Picker, AKA Dustin for sending this stuff over. He does have a YouTube channel, so I'll be linking that in the description down below. If you guys wanna go check him out, he goes on some awesome hunts and looks for nostalgic stuff over in his area. So I highly recommend you guys go check his channel out. I'm sure you guys are gonna love it. But that being said, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys go check out this video right here, which is the last epic video on this channel. I know you're gonna love it. I'll see you guys over there. And as always, Rep Pack, I will see you, beautiful people, in the next one. Adios. Bloop.